All right, so today we're going to talk about St. Augustine, um, Augustine of Hippo, Bishop of Hippo. And St. Augustine is an important figure in the history of Christianity, an important figure in um, the history of Western philosophy. He brings together two entirely sort of different worlds, right? The world of Greek philosophy and the world of Christianity. And he creates something new, right? Um, an Augustinian um, Christianity that we we um, see now in the in in the world, right? Still um, highly influential um, in the world, and it was it was by bringing the world of Plato and the Platonic um, um, worldview um, as passed down through the Neoplatonists um, and, and and Christianity into into you know one. Um, coherent system that we get uh, much of, of what is uh, important to, to Christianity um, today. <clears throat> so looking at, at slide two, I just want to look at the dates of, of um, Augustine here. Um, so we see there he was born in 354 um, and you know 33 years later or so he um, he converted to Christianity. In the meantime, he had been a, a Neoplatonist um, as well as a uh, Manichaean uh, worldview, um, uh, but his Neoplatonism uh, remained with him. He had actually had a, a mystical experience because of his, his Neoplatonism in his study, his Neoplatonic studies, and, and so this became important. Four years later, he was ordained as a priest, um, and five years after that, he became Bishop of Hippo, and then four years after that, he wrote his Confessions, the, the, the book which um, your excerpts are taken out of. Um, and then in 430, he dies. So um, so we're going to take a look today <clears throat> at, at um, Augustine's Confessions, but before, it's important to, to sort of recognize uh, the the role, right, or, or, or sort of just do a, a review of the role of, of um, uh, not, not the role, but, but do a review of, of uh, Platonic thought because it'll, it'll help us in understanding what um, Augustine is up to in his project. The next two slides are some videos I'd like you to take a look at. The first one, what is God like? So it's a video just about trying to define God, right, the, the, the difficulty um, you know, in, in that project. And then the, the next video is, is a, a video about Augustine. All right, slide five, Neoplatonism. What is Neoplatonism? So after um, Plato, there was a, a school of thought that, that developed um, that followed, um, to a large degree, Plato's worldview. And, uh, and, and this, this uh, school of thought was... Um, was most popularly or uh, most importantly developed by um, by Plotinus um, and and uh, Augustine was very much influenced um, by the Neoplatonists and by Plotinus and Plotinus was uh, a mystic um, and viewed the Platonic worldview as providing a path towards um, mystical union with the divine um, so um, <clears throat> what, what's the importance of all this, right? So the importance for, for the history of, of Christian thought, um, moving to slide seven, is the, the role of Platonism and its, its aid in developing Christian dualism. Um, so Christianity was not necessarily a dualistic um, sort of worldview, but, but after um, Augustine, it develops as such um, to a large degree, um, at, least, at least Christianity in, in the West. So Catholicism and then um, forms Christianity that, that grew out of Catholicism, such as the Reformation um, and um, you know, Protestantism as a whole. So... Um, so these these dualisms, this sort of Christian dualism, is important because it begins to pick up um, uh, or, or provide a, a, a way of sort of viewing reality um, in 
and providing a path out of, of what is seen as sort of the world of, of, of suffering, right? That we saw, like, for example, even with the Buddha, right? The sort of world of suffering, uh, a path out of that into <clears throat> the more real world, um, which we see in Plato as the world of forms. In Christianity, we see, you know, heaven, um, you know, uh, the kingdom of God, or whatever you might want to sort of call it. So let, let's see, you know, what what we find in Plato here um, that can be helpful in understanding sort of Christian thought, the stuff that, that, that Augustine might pick up on. So if you look at slide 9 and 10, these are quotes from um, from the Phaedo. So Plato's Phaedo, P-H-A-E-D-O, P-H-A-E-D-O, the Phaedo. And these are views on, on the soul. So if you sort of look at these two different views, um, you know, I think we, we get something that, that somebody like, you know, Augustine would like to resolve this, this sort of problem. So the soul and the body are together. Nature orders the one to be subject and, the, and to be ruled and the other to be rule and be master. Similarly, soul is most like the divine, deathless, intelligible, uniform, indissoluble, always the same as itself. Whereas the body is most like that which is human, mortal, multiform, unintelligible, sol um, I should be insoluble, um, insoluble, and never, oh no, that's right, I'm sorry, soluble. Yeah, body. Soluble um, and never constantly, consistently the same. Um, and then it is not natural for the body to dissolve easily um, and for the soul to be altogether indissoluble. I should say it is natural. Sorry, I'm making this correction now. So you don't see the problem, but um, so I should say it is natural for the body to be to dissolve easily and for the soul to be altogether indissoluble. Okay, very good. Um, so that's on the one hand. Right. The other hand, if the soul is polluted and impure when it leaves the body, do you think such a soul will escape um, pure and by itself? And again, uh, we must believe that the body, um, bodily elements, that which is in the soul, is heavy, ponderous, earthy, and visible. Um, through it, such a soul has become heavy and is dragged back to the visible region in fear um, of the unseen and of Hades. Okay, so we get these these two different views of, of the soul, and it seems that they, they contradict one another, right? That, that the soul um, cannot be um, in any way... Um, um, way down and another that it can. So um, for, for Augustine, this this uh, sort of view of the soul um, and that the soul can be way down in some way is important. And you know, why is this? Well, if we move here to slide 11, we get this famous quote from the Confessions by Augustine, right? Our hearts are restless until they rest in God, right? Our hearts are restless. So why are our hearts restless? Well, it's because they are far from God, according to Augustine. So, so life, right? Um, life is, is recognizing um, this distance that we are from God um, and that we have, a, a, we have these souls that have become weighed down, right? Have become separated um, because of this weight from God. So slide 12. So we, we get this um, the story of Augustine stealing um, pears, right? And he uses this story um, in sort of an important way to, to look to 
um, what he sees as um, um, as he sees as as pointing to um, sort of a, a disobedient element within us. Um, and it, it provides, right, see, this disobedience provides sort of a, a feeling, according to, to Augustine, a feeling of power, right? A feeling of freedom. So he says that he, he went with some friends and they stole some pears together. Um, and there was no reason that they needed to steal the pears. They had enough pears of their own. Um, but he stole the pears just because. Um, it says here, this, this quote here, it says, right, I loved the evil in me, seeking um, no profit from wickedness, but only to be wicked. Right? So we get a, um, an, a fairly, um, you know, negative view of the, of the, the human self. So we have... Um, you have um, a desire, according to to Augustine, we have a desire to do wrong. Um, so fifteen. So remember, in in Plato's um, view of the of the forms, right? We have all of these forms, uh, which are the the origin of of the the you know manifest world right the, the world of particulars and um, those forms right are given their reality by the good um, and so for play or excuse me for Augustine contemplating the good itself is is conceiving um, God so I want to think then about this notion of suffering next so we've been talking about suffering a little bit um, and and so how is it that Augustine solves the problem of suffering? And if we put the problem of suffering in the Christian context, right, in the religious context, we wind up with what's called the problem of evil. This is a video here on the problem of evil, but on, in 17. But the, the problem of evil is important because um, it requires one to um, think through their conception of God and then think through um, their um, the the sort of um, conception of what what is often considered to be um, you know unnecessary um, cruelty and evil and so on. Um, so so let's let's take a look at, at some of, of what um, Augustine had to say about suffering. Um, so. This is on slide 18. It said, no one loves what he endures, though he may love to endure. Um, for though he rejoices at his endurance, yet he would rather there be not, uh, there were nothing to endure. In adversity, I desire prosperity. In prosperity, I fear adversity. Um, it's not man's life upon earth. Um, trial without intermission, and so there does seem to be constant struggle, according to um, to Augustine. Um, and then, what's the relationship between pain and and pleasure? Um, what is it in the soul? I ask again, that makes it delight more to have found or regained the thing it loves than if it had always had them. Right, we can ask if that's true, right? Is it true that, that we'd rather lose to regain, or is it is it you know better to have not lost in the first place? But but here Augustine uh, seems to side with the the, the, the idea that um, we we'd rather um, lose and then regain. Um, the victorious general has his triumph, but he would not have been victorious if he had not fought. A sick friend begins to recover, though he cannot yet walk as strongly as of old. And there is more joy than there was before. 
when he was still well and could not, and excuse me, and could walk properly. Um, and finally, there's no pleasure in eating or drinking unless the discomfort of hunger and thirst come before. So in discomfort, in in um, you know sadness, um, in um, illness, we we find um, the benefits and desire, and then and then if, if we obtain those things, the the uh, satisfaction of those desires um, that we wouldn't otherwise have have gotten. Okay. Um, it says that of the life in this world, it says. Um, this life we live here below has its own attractiveness, grounded in the um, measure of beauty it has. In the enjoyment of all such things, we commit sin if um, through immoderate inclination to them, things higher and better are forgotten. So we can we can enjoy this life, he says, um, but we should only enjoy it insofar as, as we um, remember that you know this is all temporary. So free will, so 21, um, free will um, is also uh, important for Augustine. Now we saw a little bit of discussions of free will in um, Aristotle's talk on, or Aristotle's view on voluntariness. But for, for Augustine, we see the development of, of a, of a uh, um, consideration of free will that we we haven't seen before so what does he say he says the law of sin um, is the fierce force of habit by which the mind is drawn and held even against its will right the law of sin can hold one against its will and this is you know i think psychologically this is some pretty you know interesting um uh, this is, you know, a pretty interesting statement to say that that there are things in our lives that that can actually hold us against our will, right? Um, so, you know, you think commonly of, of something like addiction holds someone against um, their will because my will was perverse; it changed to lust, and lust yielded to become habit, and habit, um, not resisted, became necessity. My wills. My two wills, one old, one new, one carnal, one spiritual, were in conflict, um, and in conflict wasted my soul. Okay, so again, psychologically, we I think we we recognize this sort of process where, um, you know, part of ourselves is is pulling in one direction um, towards what our, our sort of um, desire is. The other is pulling in the other direction um, towards you know perhaps a greater desire. Um, and and there seems to be a, a conflict between these two. Um, and overcoming that, right, overcoming that conflict is what um, achieving some sort of happiness is all about. Okay, 23, the struggle with self of flesh. Um, thus with myself as object of the experiment, I came to understand um, how the flesh lusts against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh uh, habit had grown strong against my own uh, since i had come willingly uh, where i did not uh, now will to be i feared to be freed from all things that impeded me as strongly as i ought to have um, feared um, the imp excuse me as strongly as I ought to have feared the being impeded by them. Okay. Um, so we get, again, we get this dualism that shows up, right? Flesh versus spirit. Um, this sort of battle that's going on between these two, um, you know, is, is uh, fairly... Um, Careful in Augustine, a very strong Platonic um, view.
right here we we see this right augustino is held down um as agreeable by the world's baggage as one often is by sleep and indeed the thoughts with which me, uh, meditated upon god were like efforts of a man who wants to get up but is so heavy with sleep that he simply sinks back into it again um the first course delighted and convinced my mind the second delighted and convinced my body right again very platonic um okay living the world of sense the good i now sought um, was now in the things outside me to be seen by um, the eye of flesh under the sun for those find um, their joy outside them easily fall into emptiness and are um, and are spilled out upon um, the things that are seen in the things of time and in their um, starved uh, minds lack shadows okay um, I no longer wish to wished any increase of earthly goods in which a man wastes time and is wasted by them. Uh, since the simplicity of the eternal, I had, um, I had, I had other um, corn and wine and oil. So we get, um, we get with Augustine here, um, a very, very sort of um harsh view of physical reality um and you know i think the the one um yeah oh i think that's right i think that, that the view is is fairly fairly harsh and and he had a, a very particular view about human nature um which also you know provided a a, a a, a way or a reason to bring um you know plato or or um, yeah plato and um christian thought together under under one sort of roof so so that's augustine um i hope you um, enjoyed that it was fairly short so um hopefully you're able to get through it and um we will pick up um next time oh let's see um I'm going to start talking about existentialism. So um, that's a great topic. So um, hope, hope you guys all enjoy it when we get there. Thank you.